Alrighty. So we'll just place the hook in there. You can see that quite well. Alright. So what we'll start with is uh, obviously the thread base. Just do a couple of wraps. I like to work all the way to the back of the hook and then I work my way forward. So leaving the thread kind of halfway between the barb and the hook point. Just cut that off. There you go. Then I'm going to add a mono loop at the back. This just stops the fly or the, the tail or the zonka of the fly from wrapping around the hook. As I mentioned earlier, I like the flash. It's one of my pet hates, so I'll put it into all my flies. Um, you just lay it down onto the hook, tie it in quite securely. There you go, and then fold it back like that. Straighten it out. Just trim off the excess. Cool. Then we move to the eyes. Now, tying dumbbell eyes on is is not something you always do on a trout pattern. So we'll go through a couple of things that are nice to know when it comes to tying eyes. Um, one of them is is that when you're doing your your wraps or your foundations to keep the fly onto the hook, you need to make sure that you're applying pressure to the to each wrap. There's no point in just wrapping the, the, the eyes and creating bulk because then you, you've lost pressure to the hook. So the idea is, is that obviously the first couple, we'll go through the spacing now, but the first couple of, um, of wraps you just want to line them up, make sure that he stays on the hook because I know these eyes like to do their own thing. They might be. I, I hope you're right, actually, because I'd like to buy more of them. Okay, so your first couple of wraps, you know, you can do it quite loosely just to get to make sure that they're on the hook nice and straight. Okay, as far as spacing is concerned, the way I like to do it is I take my scissors um, and I, you know, the blade part of the, the scissors, this part here, I'd go about a quarter way down and just check that that fits in there which it does just about, so then I'm happy with that. I don't need to move the eyes any further back. Um, so what you can then begin to do is each time you pull down, you'll notice that each time, like let's say you, you, you wrap leftwards, or left, yeah, the eyes will move in one direction. Don't stress about that. Do, let's say, five turns in one direction, and then when you swap angles, the, the eyes will actually move back straight again. But like I said, the most important part of these eyes is just to make sure that you're applying enough pressure to the hook so the eyes don't spin. So, once you're done with that, don't just leave the, the bobbin like this because, you know, then your wraps will, will, you know, become loose. So what you do then is you do a couple and then just wrap around the hook a couple of times like that and that will just make sure everything is sealed in. So now your eyes are done. Whoop, pop it over like that. So you can see I put the eyes on the underside of the hook. I want the, 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 the point of the hook to, to ride downwards. So then we... Place the thread wraps all the way back to the back of the hook, like that. Cool. So now we're going to take some zonka, some black zonka. I've already pre-cut a strip. Um, what you can do is, is like as far as uh, measuring your zonka, it's always easier to trim your zonka if it's too long. You can't make it longer. Okay. So rather tie with a piece of zonka that's a bit longer than you would normally tie with and then you can sort it out once the fly is done because there's nothing worse than tying a fly and then realizing the tail's too short at the end of the process and you've lost seven minutes of your life 
to that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure it up. I like my zonka, or I like to tie the front end of my zonka about, let's say, five millimeters back from the eye of the hook. And if you can see it, what if I do that? Can you guys see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then what I do is I've now placed it on, on the hook. I'm going to pinch it where my thread is. Where my thread is hanging now is where I'm going to tie the back part of the zonka in. So I'm going to pinch it, okay, like that. I'm going to wet my fingers with some spit. And that just helps move the zonka out of the way. Makes it behave a little bit. I might exaggerate that a little. Make it a bit longer. So now what I've done is I've made a parting in the hair fibers of the zonka itself. So when I tie it in, I don't I don't catch any of the fibers of the zonka, and then the zonka kind of spins on the hook, and it it kind of, it just looks untidy. So we pop that down. You can see it there. So another thing with fly tying is to limit the amount of wraps you use when you're tying in each material. All right. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to wrap once and twice. So we wrap twice to basically place the threads and then from that second from that second one you pull quite tight actually really tight as tight as your thread will allow you to and then you do another two that's as many th thread wraps as you need to lock it in then i fold the zonka back like so and i do a couple of wraps just to build up a bit of thread it almost creates pressure between the you know the two the two wraps Lovely. Pull that up a bit. Up a bit. Cool. So that part of the zonka is secure and ready to go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add our dubbing. We've got gold dubbing. Um, you can use any color that 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 you like. I mean, um, a cream or a white dubbing wouldn't wouldn't be too bad. It would imitate like the belly, the underbelly of a of a. Um, of a minnow, or any, you know, tadpole or anything like that. Um, I like gold. It just it's a color that I, that seems to work quite well, and fish seem to like it. So we do that. With a lot of other flies that you'll tie, you'll you'll get told that your dubbing needs to be quite neat. In this particular case, you don't need to worry about that because you're going to brush the dubbing out. So the looser you dub onto the the thread the more beneficial because you're going to trap less fibers under your thread when you wrap. So you just move this back a little bit, the zonka, and you just wrap over making sure that you cover your your other wraps and you move forward like that, do a little bit more. It's called light bright pearl green olive. It's a spirit river um, dubbing you can get from Frontier. It's quite a nice dubbing actually. It's the the fibers are long, so you can brush it out, and it's a synthetic dubbing, so it, it lasts longer. Alrighty, that's more than enough. So before you pass the zonka back over, what you're going to do is you're going to take a wire brush if you have one. If you don't have one, I suggest getting one. They make a world of difference in a lot of different things. Where what you get that? So I actually look for one you can... I think I bought this from Mabangana. Yeah. They've got stock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a hair like so it's a a dubbing dubbing brush. So what you do with the dubbing brush is you you're basically loosening the fibers a little bit, so it almost now looks like a chenille of of sorts, like a long hair chenille. So you'll notice I'm brushing the top side first because this is the side that the zonka is going to cover. So there's no point in having very neat uh, or trapping any of those fibers and wasting them. 
then I go to the underneath the, the belly side and I just brush forward and then I catch them all and I just brush them back like that and you'll notice it gives it quite a nice almost like a you know like a instead of using flash you know you would just use this so it's a substitute for that so then what we do is we pull our zonker forward like so and it's the same thing we do one wrap two wraps just to place the thread and then from there we begin with the pressure cool so that's it lovely is that in front of the dubbing or on the dubbing so what you've done now is you've just pulled it over the top over the top of the dubbing itself so you've brushed out all the fibers you've pulled them out of the way and then you've pulled the zonka over the top so now you've got the belly of the fly and you've got the the zonka over the top of it which would act as the the dark contrast which works really well the next part that we're going to add is uh, red zonka you can see here oh, yeah okay the red zonka and the way that we're going to add this to the fly is we're going to use a, a technique called split threading i'm sure you guys have come across it with a number of different dry flies with cdc and that kind of jazz um, the best way to place this and make it nice and neat is you use a bulldog clip you know just a piece of stationery like this you just trap the fibers see but you just trap the fibers inside the bulldog clip about halfway like that can you see it okay good and then you just remove the fibers from the hide so you just cut it nice and easy there we go then what we're going to do is is we're going to flatten the thread so to do that you just pull it long, you, you allow yourself some thread, and then you take your forefinger and your thumb and you pull downwards. And what this does is it just stops any twisting of the thread itself. Cool. So it's flat, it's flat enough now. You can use a needle or a hook or anything like that. The problem with that that I find is that you have to have very steady hands and I've got a shake so it doesn't work for me so I just use the point of my scissors I come into the fly or into the thread and I just split the thread halfway down and I run it down like that now my thread is split okay keep my finger in there to keep it open just remove some of this fluff Alrighty, we're going to place our red zonka into the, the split thread that we've made, like that. And what this is essentially doing is it's just making it like a chenille or a brush that uh, you would otherwise put in there, but you know, it's your own personal one. So then what you do is you do that, um, you lift your forefinger like this just to create pressure and you just twist and twist. Twist. Yeah, it doesn't really matter which way you twist it. So what is all it's doing is it's twisting the thread, catching the fibers in that, you know, in in the thread itself. So you've basically made yourself is my a bit of a brush, as we call it, chenille. Cool. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to wrap this onto the hook. Um, after each wrap, we're going to palmer the fibers backwards so we don't just trap them and create unnecessary bulk. So we're going to wrap forward, catch all the fibers with our fingers, like that. Wrap again. Wrap again. Just like that. Okay, 
So now... Is that right up against the eyes? Uh, no, not quite. not quite. I've actually tried to stay as far away from the eyes as I could. Okay. Um, which I didn't do so well. But we'll see what happens. Um, with my wire brush, I've actually super glued um, some Velcro to the back of it for the more gentle brushings that need to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush this all forward. And this just kind of loosens some of the trap fibers and it, it kind of places everything um, more effectively. So we've just brushed it all back like that. But now you'll notice that um, the belly of the fly, for example, is now covered by this, this red uh, zonka. It's up to you. You can leave it in there if you like. Um, I don't like to do it. I just trim it all out. So what I do is I just separate it like this. I just snip it off. Be gone. There we go. So I snip it off. I just neaten it up a little bit with the scissors. Just so that that gold is really exposed. So you can experiment with this, you know, you can use purple zonka, you can use um, orange zonka, you can use chartreuse, any kind of triggers, you know, colors that are, are that, that might um, trigger aggression in the fish's mind and make him eat the fly. Um, the next part of this process is the deer hair. Um, deer hair doesn't have the best reputation in the world. It might be because it's messy or guys just, you know, just haven't tried it. Um, from my experience, it's actually not too bad. Uh, you just take the deer hair and you you fight with it and it stays on your hook. And I'll show you how you do that now. Um, some guys use deer, you know, the, the hair stackers and all of that kind of stuff. That's important if you're tying dry flies and you need your, your, um, your profiles to be perfect. In this scenario, we're cutting the deer hair. Um, and we're actually going to shape it, so it, it really doesn't matter. You're literally just going to pinch it. Um, say anywhere from a pencil's width to half a pencil. It's up to you, depending on the size of the fly you're going to use and the amount of deer hair you have available to you. So you just snip it. There we go. And you'll see I've got a nice little clump of deer hair. Um, then what I do is I usually tie it in halfway, you know, half half the length of this of the deer hair strand. So I'll place it on top of the hook like this, maybe not halfway, about three quarters. I'll place it on like that, and I'll do one loose wrap, two loose wraps as usual, and then I'll after that second wrap I will tighten, and you'll see how it begins to to kind of spread and flay like that. That's what you want. So. A lot of guys actually spin the deer hair. I manually do it. Um, I just find that I get more control doing that. So I'll just pass one more just to create more control. And I actually just turn it upside down and um, grab another clump about the similar amount, about half a pencil's width of deer hair, like that. Place it underneath, the same process, and just trap the fibers nicely like that. Lovely. Okay, so now you're going to look at your fly, if this was your own fly, and you, you might think, oh, the fibers aren't evenly distributed around the fly. Well, that's not a problem because you can manipulate it with your fingers. So you just grab it and you literally pull it like this. until you get, you know, the desired result. Until you're happy with what you've got in front of you. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more just to supplement uh, 
the amounts I've got there. So, do the same thing. On top of the... Uh, not quite yet. I'm right. still trying to sneak it just behind the eyes. Okay. So my thread wraps are actually going to fall behind the eyes. I'll, we'll get to the front part of the eyes now. And then we'll repeat that process. I find that you, you want to make sure that you've got enough bulk, particularly around the eye area. Otherwise the fly looks a bit funny. It, you trim it and it just doesn't... I mean, it'll work. The fish is not going to notice a difference, but, you know to your own uh, standards. It might not work. There we go. So then, gone through that. Now I'm going to try and sneak my thread wraps around and then two in front of the eye. So I'm going to push all my fibers back like this. Okay, so you can now see we've wrapped the, the deer hair all the way to the eyes and almost on top of the eyes. Now we're going to do this section from the eyes to the, the eye of the hook. This can be quite tricky because if you put too much fibers in, when, you, when you're finished, you're going to cover your, the eye of your hook. And that's frustrating, particularly if you you know, trying to change flies quickly in low light conditions and that kind of jazz. So. so, what I do then is I take the same amount as before, but instead of tying underneath and on top, I'll try and spin it like you normally would spin deer hair. Let's actually turn it around. see we've actually got enough space to put more in there we go. same process as before Alrighty, so now it looks bizarre mm -hmm. at this stage. What we're going to do is we're just going to... So this is quite... It's not tricky, but it might just take a bit of practice. It's just getting your wraps to, to be, you know, in front of the, the deer here. So there we go. That's about 95% of the fly done. Um, as you can see, uh, it looks a bit strange. What we'll do is we'll just try and create a bit of a, a thread head there, some space to tie off, and then we'll just make, I'll just do a quick makeshift uh, knot so that we can begin the trimming process. So the next part is where we trim the fly, and it's... If you've ever trimmed deer hair with blunt scissors, this will be magic to you. So, I think I actually bought my phone. So, um, I just use these uh, razors. I mean, they're really cheap. They cost like 10 rand and you get 5, so it's 2 rand a razor. Um, the only tricky thing with these guys is actually trying to find a way of storing them once you've done with them. Um, like I said before, please be very careful when you're using these things because they're exceptionally sharp. Alrighty. So you can see that's what the blade looks like. Alright. So, how I like to trim things is I start at the top, then I turn the fly over, I do the bottom, the underside, and then I'll begin to shape the sides. Um, you'll be surprised at how quickly you can mess up a fly like this um, by cutting it wrong or doing too much too quickly. 
So it takes a bit of a steady hand, or quite a steady hand, and what you're going to do is you're just going to move it up like that. So you can see how nicely that, that shaped and cut the top there. So we're going to turn it over like that. And we'll do the same thing underneath. So you can see what it looks like underneath. So then, so now we've done the underneath and now we can begin with the sides and the front. So you start right next to the eye of the hook. Try and clear the eyes so the eyes are visible. There we go. This side, difficult to show you, but I just need to get that done. So the shaping process as well, I mean, it, I'm, as far as explaining to people how to do it, I think it, it also takes a bit of trial and error so you can find your own, you know, your own way and, and, and your own shapes and the flies that, that you tie. But um, I like to make it flat underneath and then give it a bit of a, um, like a hump on top. And that just aids the, the action in the fly when it, you know, does that kind of movement in the water. So I'm quite happy with the shape of this fly at the moment. But the only thing that's wrong now is that we've got these long fibers coming out the back of the fly. So what I'll do is I'll come in at a 90 degree angle. And I'll just softly touch it where I want it to be gone. And it will cut quickly. There we go. It's just about right. There's there's a couple of little sections. I mean, if you if you're pedantic about the way they look, then you can you know taper the the fibers down into the body by just running your, the blade down at an angle. There we go. Okay. I'm quite happy with that.